Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tablet of Curiosities on our own devices. I'm Jean Messier, and a little while ago, I heard a rather amusing joke along the lines of, if our calculators had histories, they would be more embarrassing than our browser histories. And indeed, I must admit that having a calculator readily available on my phone has rendered my mental math abilities rather non-existent. But this type of luxury, having this much computing power in your pocket, is a rather recent development. Once upon a time, if you wanted even just rudimentary calculation ability, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, this required a rather heavy and very sophisticated piece of machinery. And I've long been fascinated by mechanical calculating and computing devices. And so I've actually started putting together a collection of old adding machines in order to feature in videos on this channel. And to start off that series, I thought I would start at the very bottom with probably the most rudimentary adding machine you can have. This is a Wolverine adding machine from the 1950s, and this was actually sold as a children's toy. So the mechanism inside this machine was patented in 1939 by Linus J. Ritz, and the machines themselves were manufactured by the Wolverine Supply and Manufacturing Company of Pittsburgh, which was founded in 1903 by Benjamin Franklin Bain. And the company initially produced tools and dies for other companies, including the Sand Toy Company, which, as the name implies, manufactured toys powered by falling sand. Now, at some point, this company went out of business and its products were acquired by Wolverine, which started marketing them as well as its own line of toys. And they became very successful and very well known for their line of brightly lithographed tin toys. And they made all sorts of things. They made toys powered by wind, by falling marbles, by sand. They had a line of girls' toys, which included miniature washing and kitchen sets. Can you tell it was the 1950s? And in 1962, they changed their name to the Wolverine Toy Company. Now, these adding machines were introduced in the early 1950s and originally were sold uh, by Sears Roebuck and then under the Wolverine brand name and later under license by other companies, including the Peter Pan Company. So you will often find these with Peter Pan brand badging on them, as well as Wolverine like this one. And while these came in a couple of different color combinations, the most common one you'll find is this red, blue and beige. So let's actually have a look at how this works. It's really quite simple. You have four columns for your ones, your tens, your hundredths, and your thousandths place. So this can add up to 9,999. Though if you're using this for some very simple accounting, and indeed this was also marketed towards housewives and small businesses, you could use the first two columns for cents and the last two columns for dollars and add up to $99.99. And how you use this is sort of like a rotary telephone. You place your finger in the slot beside the number that you want to add, and you push it all the way to the bottom. And the instructions on the lid actually specifically say, use your finger, don't use a pencil or a stick. I would imagine because that could get stuck inside and damage the mechanism. So for example, if you want to add five, so we just slide down five, do it again, and then when it clicks over to 10, it's going to carry the one into the next column. So I can do that again to get 15. I can add a 50 to get 65, 565, 5,565, and so on. Quite simple. Uh, now, if you want to reset the machine, there's no overall reset lever like there would be on more sophisticated adding machines. You have to start at the right and zero each column individually. So as you just add the number that will bring it up to 10 and proceed from right to left. And you have to do it from right to left given the way that the mechanism is set up. If you do it from left to right, you'll never get all the columns reset. Now, this is just simple tin plate. It's held together with tabs, so it's quite easy to pull apart. And we can have a look at the inside. And as you'll see, there's really nothing much to this mechanism. So we have our return springs here for those sliders, and those sliders are connected to these number wheels using a rack and pinion mechanism. We have a ratchet and pull mechanism with these brass springs here to stop the mechanism from running in reverse. And each of these number wheels here have a cog wheel with 10 teeth, and these run inside these pulleys. And each of these pulleys has another ratchet mechanism inside of it that allows the teeth to engage when the wheel goes over zero, and that allows it to step 
the next wheel over to carry the digit. So if there are one's place turns over to 10 to the zero, it's going to step the next wheel over to the one to give 10. And the way that these cogs are linked is the reason that you have to reset the machine from right to left. Otherwise, it will just affect all the other drums and you'll never be able to reset all of them at once. So as I said at the beginning of the video, this is pretty much the simplest adding machine that you can have that isn't a slide roll or an abacus. And as such, it's really only good for one thing, which is addition. You can do multiplication with it by adding the same number over and over again, but you need to keep the number of multiplications in your head. In a more sophisticated adding machine, you would have a feature called a register that would keep track of the number of times you added a particular number, making it easier to do addition. Uh, you can't do division with this, but you can do a form of subtraction using a method called the nines complement. And how this works is if you're subtracting a smaller number from a larger number, you have to find the nines complement of the smaller number. And the nines complement is found by subtracting nine from each digit of that number without carrying over. So for example, let's subtract 111 from 555. Of course, you can do that in your head, it's 444. But if we do it using the nines complement method, you find the nines complement of the smaller number. In this case, it will be 888. So let's add 555 to 888 you will get 1,443. And so the carried over digit you get rid of and you add a one to the last digit to get 444. And so this is how you can do subtraction with a mechanism that only does addition. Now conversely, if we want to uh, subtract a larger number from a smaller number to get a negative result, you find the nines complement of the larger number and then add the two. So in this case, if you want to subtract 555 from 111 to get negative 444, we will find the nines complement of 555, which is 444, add that to 111, which gives us 555, and find the nines complement of that, which is 444. And since there is no carryover, that indicates that it is a negative number, so negative 444. Now, while that's fairly straightforward, I would imagine that in most cases it would be a lot simpler and faster to just do the calculation on a piece of paper or in your head rather than going through all this rigmarole. Though thankfully, if you wanted to do more complex mathematics, there were a lot more sophisticated mechanical calculators available at the same time as this was. And we'll be looking at some of those in future videos, so please stay tuned for that. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on another episode of Cabinet of Curiosities. We'll have a look at more mechanical calculators and other fantastic devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Messier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.